You guys know that Saturday is supposed to be my day off, right? So as I'm sure most of you have heard and seen yesterday as of the uploading of this video, YBA dropped an update that did a few fixes to some bugs that aren't really large enough to warrant its own video, but the thing that is big enough to warrant its own video is the introduction of a new stand, Red Hot Chili Peppers. And of course, this had to come out on Saturday, the day that I normally take off to do, well, nothing, since I upload every other day or stream every other day of the week. For those who don't understand what I mean, I don't record or edit anything because nothing comes out on Sunday, and all my videos are done either the day before or two days before they come out. Anyways, as for Red Hot Chili Pepper itself, this stand is kind of a good time, but it's a little bit weak. We'll talk about it throughout the video, but I think the biggest thing that's going on here, and I'll spoil the end of the video for you, is that this stand is clearly meant to be a long-range piloting and supportive stand. And there's nothing wrong with that, it's just that most of the games I play are 1v1s in close range, and it's not really optimized for that. But like I said, we'll talk about that stuff in due time. Right now though, let's move on to the moveset, and I'll show you exactly what Red Hot Chili Peppers is capable of in YBA. So unsurprisingly, when it comes to the moveset, the first thing I'll be talking about is the overall stand speed. And unlike the last few stands that I've reviewed, Red Hot Chili Peppers' overall stand speed is fast. Mind you, the base destructive power is quite low, but despite that, your M1s and Barrage are quick, and the Barrage has a lot of hits in it. So that is something to keep in mind when you're M1ing against someone, because if they have a slower stand, you do hold the advantage. The first move we'll be taking a look at, and the one the stand is based basically entirely based around is the electric guitar. The electric guitar fills your electricity meter when you hold down the key for it. There's three different stages when it comes to charging the There's three different stages when it comes to charging the electric There's three different stages when it comes to charging fucking kill me. There's three different stages when it comes to charging the electric guitar. Yes! I did it. Oh, thank God, finally. The first stage charges really, really slowly, then you power up a bit and it starts getting faster, and then the massive visual cue and it charges significantly faster. This means that if you manage to be able to stand still and just charge without being interrupted, you'll be able to charge very quickly, whereas if you only have time to stop for a little bit and charge, it's going to take a really long time to fill that meter up all the way. Now I know what you're asking, what exactly is the point of filling this meter? And I'll tell you what the point is. Having the meter filled means means that assuming that you've got the upgrades for them, all the moves in your move set gain some sort of increased effect at the cost of some of your electricity, whether that be more range, more damage, etc. And this stand really shines when you are able to fill that meter. But that strategy stuff and conclusion stuff, not for the move set. When it comes to the things that get buffed, I'll be talking about that per move as we get there. Last thing to note on the electric guitar is that after using it a bunch, sometimes it'll bug out and you'll get this really obnoxious screen shake effect that just won't go away no matter what I do. In this specific scenario, I had to restart the entire game. Resetting, using moves, nothing worked. So I'm really hoping that this gets fixed. If it doesn't, I'm never gonna use the stand. I'll get a headache. It literally made me motion sick. I can't deal with this. As for the first actual move in our moveset, we'll be taking a look at Lightning Jabs. This move shoots your stand towards the nearest opponent and hits them four times with some quick jabs that deal five damage each. Some things to note about this ability, if you get hit while you're activating it, it will cancel. People are both capable of blocking and perfect blocking this attack, although the perfect blocking is only going to work on the startup of it and not any of the jabs afterwards, obviously. However, with the nature of the attack, and it's long range, a lot of time if you're using it at the optimal range, even if you get parried, it won't matter because you're so far that they can't punish you for it. 
As for the buff when you get your electric meter filled up, the attack gains what I can only assume is an increased range, although the range of the move is already massive so I could be wrong, and the hit damage is increased from 5 to 6.3. None of the properties of the move change whatsoever, meaning you still get cancelled if you get hit, the move can still be perfect blocked, and people can still block it. The overall charged cost on this ability is very low though, meaning you can use it a lot of times on your charge bar. The next move that we'll be taking a look at is Electric Discharge, which shoots out a huge laser directly at wherever your cursor is pointed that deals a flurry of three damage hits. This move, unlike the previous move I was talking about, does not get cancelled if you get hit. It also can't be perfect blocked, unsurprisingly considering it's pretty much a projectile. Your opponent is capable of blocking this move, however, and it has considerable startup, which means most of the time it will be blocked. The electrically charged version of this move has a much larger looking hitbox, but I don't believe that the hitbox is actually any bigger, and it increases the damage from 3 damage a hit to 3.6 damage a hit. As with the lightning jabs, none of the properties of the move are affected by the electrical charge. Still doesn't get cancelled, still can be blocked, that's about it. Our next move is Pinky Slash, which after a considerable windup, slashes a horizontal line of electricity in front of you. This move deals 20 damage, as well as applying a bleed effect to your opponent. It should also be noted that the move block breaks, making it Red Hot Chili Pepper's only block break, and it can't be parried, which means that his only block break is also an unparryable block break. Downside is, if you get hit during it, you get cancelled. When you charge up this move, other than the effects changing, I don't think anything happens at all. I could be completely wrong on this, and I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments, but as far as I know, the electrically charged version of Pinky Slash does nothing. The damage doesn't increase, the bleed might increase, none of the properties of the move like getting cancelled or being able to be perfect blocked or any of that changes. Although if it did change to be able to be perfect blocked, that'd be kind of messed up. It might be a little bit faster, but all in all, it doesn't really make too much of a difference whether you're charged or not when you use this from the looks of it. And our last real move on the moveset is the Electric Flash. This move is a large 360 degree stun that deals zero damage, but does stun the opponent for a very short amount of time. The move does stun you through block, but if you're holding block, it doesn't unblock you. It behaves a lot like inhale in that regard. If you're already blocking and you get stunned, you will retain that block until you let go. On that same note of properties, if you get hit at any point during the animation, the move will cancel, and while you're stunned, just like any other stun, you're still capable of using your stand barrage. The electrically charged version of this move has a larger radius and, as far as I'm aware, stuns for slightly longer. I should also mention that this move blinds the opponent, not sure how I managed to miss that on the first go around, but both the base version and the electrically charged version stun the people and blind them for the duration of that stun. Their screen is completely white, they can't see anything. Finally, just like the other electrically charged moves, none of the properties of this move change whatsoever. Still can hold hold block, still get cancelled if you get hit, you get the idea. The final move in Red Hot Chili Peppers kit isn't really a move at all and more of a buff, and this is Electrify. This move without any upgrades increases the speed of your M1s and your M2, as well as the speed when you're using your pilot. There are two upgrades that pertain to this ability. The first one, and the most important, is the one that gives your M1 attack stun, and the second, less important upgrade makes it so that while it's active, you have to get hit with significantly harder moves in order to have your stand knocked out of you. This ability is a toggleable ability, and while it's active, your electricity power slowly drains down no matter what. The rate at which it drains has nothing to do with how many M1 attacks, M2 attacks, or how much pilot you have. It's a set rate depending on how many upgrades you have in the skill tree. It should be noted that Electrify does not affect any of your other moves in your skill set, so having it active doesn't make anything any faster or do any more damage. Those moves are still affected by your electric meter being charged, and they still use the meter on top of Electrify's passive reduction of it. With that though, I've covered all of Red Hot Chili Peppers moves and how they all function, so now we're going to move on to strategies and I'll tell you exactly how you should be using the stand. 
So before we start actually talking strategy, I would like to make it abundantly clear that I'm probably not the best or most qualified person to be talking about this right now. And the reason I say that is because a lot of the matches that I played today were 2-0s and not in my favor. Not to say that I didn't destroy people and win a lot of matches, I definitely won more than I lost, but I don't think that's saying much because every good player I went up against absolutely rocked me. And yes, the pun was intended. Regardless though, I think I've got some good tips and I think I've got a grasp on how you should be playing this stand. So if you're struggling, like me, I'll try to help you out at least a little bit. The first thing to note about Red Hot Chili Peppers is your biggest advantage is distance. And I know a lot of you are gonna say, but Red Hot Chili Pepper doesn't have any projectiles. What I mean by distance is distance from your character and the enemy character and not your stand from the enemy character. The best situation you can ever be in with this stand is you far away with your stand in pilot beating up on them while they're further away from you. If you manage to get someone stuck trying to fight your pilot further away from your character, you're in good shape and you have a very good chance of winning the match. The second they start hard targeting your character itself, that's when you can start being in trouble. It doesn't mean you're totally doomed, but it does mean that your job gets quite a bit more complicated. The other thing you need to consider at all times is you always want to keep track of your electricity bar. You live or die by this electricity bar, as if you don't have it charged, you're constantly losing out on damage, and you lose access to Electrify, which is arguably the best move you have. Those fast M1s that have stun on them are incredibly powerful because you can combo some of your moves as well as your spec moves off of them. And the more time that you don't have Electrify up, the more time you're probably having the crap beaten out of you. If you're playing 1v1s, then you need to charge the electricity meter right off the bat. And if you can't do that, you want to charge it slowly but surely every single chance you get. Even if that's just a millisecond of tapping the button and getting a little bit of electrical charge in between a fight, you always want to make sure that you're getting some of it, because the electric guitar has a really low cooldown which means you can just pop it for a millisecond every once in a while. As for when you do manage to get charged up, you have a few options. You can try to get up close and personal with the stand itself, which I don't really recommend, or you can try to use your pilot and push them away from you and start panicking. If you manage to get in your opponent's head with the pilot and make them panic, that's the way to go. Three M1s into your lightning jab is a true combo, and landing both pinky slash and your electric discharge is extremely easy as the stand pilot isn't slowed down by any of these moves. The same thing applies to electric flash. It's really easy to just stay out of the range of the opponent and throw this move out while you're moving super fast with your pilot and stun them to get a free electric discharge or pinky slash. While they're in that stun, there's nothing they can do, so it's free damage for you. The other thing to consider doing when you manage to stun them is charging your electricity bar. When they're stunned, like I said, nothing they can do, great time to get some charge in. The other thing to consider is while they're away from you, assuming you can get them away from you, you can charge your electricity while in the pilot and still moving. Obviously you can't attack, but you can dupe your opponent into thinking that you can hurt them by running around them with the pilot while you're charging. If they're not very bright, they'll fall for this and keep trying to attack the pilot while you safely charge further away. As I've said plenty of times, you live or die by the damage you get off this charge. So having it up and getting it for free because the opponent is distracted is definitely the way to go. But honestly, overall when it comes to strategies, I don't think anything that I'm going to tell you here is going to help you very much. The best strategy you have for Red Hot Chili Peppers is to play a different game mode and find some people to play with, or just harass people in main game I suppose. It's definitely a good stand for both of those, as when you're further away, you are free to charge, and if you have teammates covering you, there's not a whole lot the opponent can do to pressure you. You can basically just be a general nuisance, constantly poking them with all your moves from further away, and if they want to get to you, they have to get through your buddy. In game modes like SBR, I'm sure Red Hot Chili Peppers will shine, and we'll probably see quite a few of them. But for 1v1's mode, at least as far as I see it, it's not super optimal, and I doubt we'll see that many of them. Anyways, that's all I got for the strategies section, but we are actually adding a new section to these stand reviews. 
courtesy of CJ Prada. As of today forward, after the strategies section, I'll hold a counters section and tell you exactly how to fight against these stands. A lot of it will be the same info that you heard from strategy in reverse, so if you've already heard some of this stuff, feel free to skip it. The timestamps will be there. But if anyone is ever curious as to how to fight against some of these stands that I'm reviewing, this should give you a hand. With that being said though, let's get started. This section might be the most lackluster of any of my stand reviews, mostly because fighting against Red Hot Chili Peppers is really easy and the counterplay is quite self-explanatory. But in case you haven't caught on already, almost every single one of Red Hot Chili Peppers moves is blockable, as well as almost every single move of Red Hot Chili Peppers is cancelable by getting hit. Red Hot Chili Peppers has one move that doesn't get cancelled if you get hit, and it has one move that you can't block. That means that if you're blocking at medium range, you'll never take damage. And as long as you're constantly hitting them over and over again, the only move that they can ever hit you with is Electric Discharge. And this move doesn't do a huge amount of damage or have a huge amount of stun on it, meaning the only options they have are M1s, Barrage, and that. That's code for they can't do anything. So if you're having trouble fighting against Red Hot Chili Peppers, odds are it's because you're giving them too much space. If you let the Red Hot Chili Pepper bully you into a corner with their pilot, you're never going to be able to kill them. The best case scenario if they have you locked out of range with the pilot is to just try to completely ignore it and run past it to get to the user. Even if you tank a bunch of damage doing so, it's a lot better than trying to fight the piloted stand. The other option you have is to barrage the pilot. This gives you a few options because Red Hot Chili Peppers barrage is really, really weak. So odds are if you're using any other stand in the game, especially one of the better stands, you'll be perfectly fine barraging them first. And because pilots now get slowed down when they get hit, if you barrage them, you can get your full barrage off and they're forced to either barrage back or pull their pilot back. If they barrage back, you take the damage trade and get way more damage than they do. And if they pull their pilot back, you got exactly what you wanted and they're gone now. There are a few other nifty little things that react with pilot weirdly. Some of the ones that are really obvious to me are Sticky Fingers pull. His extend arm, if you hit a pilot with it, will pull your user from like halfway across the map as long as you hit the pilot. And a lot of grab moves, including beatdowns, if you hit the piloted stand with it, will automatically teleport you to the user. So if you manage to hit the pilot with a Star Platinum of the World beatdown or something, it'll automatically teleport you to the user and start beatdowning them. So to sum it all up, the biggest counter to Red Hot Chili Pepper is pressure. They can't handle the pressure whatsoever. They have almost no get off me options and almost all of their moves get canceled if you get hit. So if you're just constantly M1ing them, there's effectively nothing they can do. Final note before we go to the conclusion, Red Hot Chili Pepper has no counter to time stop, so time stop obliterates it. That goes for pretty much every single stand that doesn't have TS resist but this one, as far as I'm aware, has no counter to it at all, meaning that if you get a time stop on them, they're screwed. That's that for counters though, let's move on to the conclusion, I'll talk about how I feel, and we'll wrap things up. In conclusion, Jesus, this review is long. No, but seriously, this stand is ultra complicated to figure out and play, and hands down the most complicated they've added recently. With all the managing of bars and when to use what moves, it's just a mess, and it's quite difficult to get a grasp on how to play it and how to play it well. I think I've gotten relatively close to the skill ceiling for the stand. I know that's probably a little bit arrogant to say, but it certainly took a whole lot longer to figure everything out than any of the recent stands have. And the payoff for that is not even a little bit worth it. You can go through the effort of learning all the optimal times of when to charge, when not to charge, when to use your pilot, 
how to use your pilot effectively, when to use your moves, and it doesn't matter because you're gonna get outclassed by the one or two button pressing meta stands that just delete you instantly. And even going up against some of the non-meta stands, it's still kinda difficult. Red Hot Chili Peppers is just not designed for 1v1s and it shows. And honestly, I don't really think there's anything wrong with that. Not every stand has to be tailored to 1v1s mode because 1v1s mode isn't the only mode in the game. Just because 1v1s is the game mode that I play the most, doesn't mean that every single stand in the game needs to be tailored directly to that. So having Red Hot Chili Peppers be a team-oriented stand that benefits a whole lot from having someone watching your back so that you can pilot effectively, I don't think there's really anything wrong with that. I do think Red Hot Chili Peppers is a little weak though, and I know based off the comments section of my video that I released yesterday that a lot of people were hoping that I would just rip into this stand. I assume that means that most people think it's garbage. And to those people, I would say, you're right and you're wrong. It is garbage in the sense that, like I said, it's not good in 1v1s. But it isn't garbage in the scenarios where it shines. And the thing that I think is really cool about this stand is that the stand is basically exactly the way it should be. In the show, Red Hot Chili Peppers is a strong, remotely piloted stand that benefits a lot from prep time and having access to electricity. And in the game, that's exactly what it is. It benefits a whole lot from having your electricity charged, and the stand is great when used at a long range while being piloted, but once you get up close to the user, it's not nearly as effective anymore when going up against those really strong stands that can just beat the crap out of it and are faster than it. So all in all, I think Red Hot Chili Peppers is in a pretty decent place right now. I'm always skeptical when it comes to buffing and nerfing things, especially this soon after they come out. Obviously, Red Hot Chili Peppers just released, and I'm well aware that I'm being hypocritical when I release these videos right after they come out, but you also have to understand it from my YouTuber's perspective. The time when these stands are most relevant is right after they come out. So if I wait a week and then post a video, by that point, most people don't care anymore. So I'm heavily pressured into posting videos anyway, but I try to keep them as level-headed and non-reactionary as possible. You're free to agree or disagree with me on that, but that's just the way I feel about it. So if it were up to me, I would say probably leave Red Hot Chili Peppers alone, and if they're not going to do that, a very, very slight buff and that buff should probably be to the electrical charge move with the guitar rather than any of the actual moves themselves. From the about three hours that I played with this stand in 1v1s, the biggest issue I always ran into is trying to get time to charge up my electricity. It takes a very long time to charge your electricity, especially since you have to wait through the entire animation to get itself started before you actually start gaining the electricity. So I presume the best change would be to make it act like Haman, where regardless of how long you hold the button down, it always charges at the same rate. But like I said, I think it's probably fine if they just leave it alone. Anyways, that's all I got. So I'm very curious as to what you guys think of Red Hot Chili Peppers. As I said earlier, I think I already get the general reaction. I think people don't like it, but who knows? We'll see. So if you like it, if you don't like it, how you feel, leave it in the comments because it's always nice to read comments about stuff that I can actually relate and respond to rather than memes and stuff. So if you enjoyed the video, learned anything, you know, that kind of stuff, leave a like, subscribe. If you didn't, don't do those things. And with all that being said, have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you next time.